today we're going to cover how to make our own sketchbooks. The reason we make our own sketchbooks is because they are cheap like this, all right? Uh, there's no other way around it. They're just super cheap to make them yourself. Plus, hopefully you find that you might actually like the hands-on nature of making your own sketchbook. Now, we're going to be doing it with the method called Coptic binding. I like Coptic binding because it opens flat, and that's very important whenever you're sketching, you're drawing, you know, you're really doing anything, you need the sketchbook to be able to open up. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this, different materials. That was just a ceramic one. This one has fabric, uh, like fur fabric on it. You know, there's a bunch of different ways that you can handle making this. So while the pattern might be kind of simple at first and you're like, well, great, now I have this thing, you can actually approach it in a lot of different ways and it can turn out pretty good. Like here's this big old boy I made, it hung from some, uh, some ropes. Also did some other things to it, wiggled it, chunky. This was from my Master of Fine Arts show. It was a collection of every print that I made one summer and it has wooden boards for the covers. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can handle this, you know? It also got damaged in a slight flood. So thank you, nature. Love ya. All right, so whenever we're talking about paper, um, there's a lot of specific rules you need to follow, and I disregard all of those. So paper has a bias, it has a whole bunch of things, I don't really care. But what you need to know is you need to get 36 sheets of paper, and you are going to be dividing them into chunks of six. And then by the end, you should have six sections of six pieces of paper. And then we are going to fold all those bad boys in half. Make sure you line it up on the left side using your index, middle, and thumb. And on the right, you can use your fingernail to just crease it down. Now, you can do these all individually if you want to make a nice, crisp, clean fold of paper here. Or you can just take six at a time and fold them. Again, like, I'm not going, like, I'm not here to really speak the, the harsh gospel of book binding, I love it, but I mean, whatever makes it easier for you and makes you buy more books, that's all I ever wanna see. Here, I'm using something called a bone folder. Uh, same idea as creasing it. Uh, you can also use scissors. I've seen a lot of people use scissors. I was using uh, their water bottle, that works a lot. Um, I saw one kid use their phone and I just was like, why? There's so many other things in this room that you could use to make a crease. Why would you use your phone? Anyway, uh, Crease, crease. So once you get all six of them, you can start stacking them inside of each other. So you can see it goes a whip. Nope. Whoop. I'm not gonna do sound effects for the rest of them. You get the idea though, right? So it's going to be six that you are putting inside of, uh, or five go inside of the one, whatever, however you wanna say it. You can also just fold all the sheets at the same time to make it easier. Just ultimately know that you are doing 36 sheets with six sections of six. So you should have six sections of paper. These are actually called signatures. So I might just refer to it as that from here on out. All right, as you finish up here, uh, you can go ahead and just stack them all together. It helps sometimes to put a book on top of them to help weigh them down, but that's up to you. All right, now we're gonna be marking our holes. Uh, we want to do this based off of uh, even numbers. It needs to be an even number of holes. It just makes it so it rotates better onto the other side. Uh, you also want to make sure that there is a hole a half inch away from the top and bottom. Really, after that, you can kind of make it what you want. Now, if you're using a jig or something like that that already exists, don't worry about it. Just use whatever's there. But this one is going to be like a one, two, three, two, one sort of thing where they're all grouped together. So first, make sure to make that half inch mark. That was really important. If you don't have one about a half inch away from the edge, it will start spinning on you. Like whenever you open the book, it'll move a little bit more. And that's really just a bummer. And uh, you do all this work making a book and then it's like, well, it's just rude. All right, so as you keep working, 
Uh, you can decide where the holes are going to go. I think on this one I'm doing, uh, they're about half inch apart um, in groups of two or three. You know, something really simple. But if you wanted to make them evenly spaced, you totally can. Like, how you approach it's really up to you. So now we're going to get into uh, a more important part of all this. You need to stab holes through your paper. Uh, so those marks we were making was just to make it easier to stab the holes. Uh, to do this, you're going to take uh, one that one of the ones that has the uh, the markings on it. This is going to be called your template, and you're going to put it inside an entire signature. It can be extra; it doesn't really matter. But you're going to put it inside. Take a binder clip, and that'll help hold it down. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be stabbing through the paper at that dot at your template. So just kind of stab, and then give it a little wiggle. Uh, that wiggle is pretty important because uh, it's. You want just that little bit more room, and this, uh, it's called an awl, uh, just gives you just enough room, but you know, you might as well just make it a little bit easier on yourself. But you're gonna stab and wiggle, stab and wiggle. An important thing to note, uh, how I'm doing this, you can hang over the edge of your table and stab it if that's easier for you. Um, here, I'm holding the paper with my left hand, my right hand's putting all my weight down on the paper, and it's making it a lot easier for me to hold it in place as I, uh, pierce the paper but you can find all sorts of ways to make it easier for you there's cradles that exist um, there's well, I can't really think any any other ways yeah off the side of the table like this or a cradle so if you have any good ideas to stab these a lot easier please let me know down in the comments all right so what you want to do is you're taking your paper out that inside uh, template one and you're putting into other signatures and stabbing through them as well. That's gonna make sure that your holes primarily line up. It's not It's not gonna be perfect by any means, all right? It's, but it should be all, you know, fine. And it's, it's all right to just be fine sometimes. Go ahead and weigh it down whenever you're done and let's get on over to covers. So with covers, we are uh, going to be doing a sticker cover. So those will be provided for you, but you're gonna need your boards. I already have the holes drilled in them, pretty simple. Uh, I have some water resistant stickers for the covers, a pen and an awl. That's really all you need for this. Now you may be saying, hey, how do I drill the holes? It, I mean, I can, I can just do it. You can just hang out with me. It'll be cool. Just like, we'll just drill all of them at the same time. Everyone will be cool. All right, so uh, I have them in there. One thing I'm making sure is to make sure that the papers face the right direction. This can get very confusing pretty quickly, so make sure you make little notes. So to transfer this, the nice and easy thing about this is the stickers, you're on the back of the sticker paper now, right, uh, is reflective. So instead of having to measure and do a bunch of work, you can just put your board on the inside and then trace around it. Now you may be saying, hey, hey, that's, uh, won't the paper come off and I won't be able to see the outline anymore? D don't worry about you, uh, baby bird, I'll feed you. Look at that. So when you move it, you can still see the indentation of where I dr drug the pen through. This is what we are going to use to line our board up and to transfer our sticker to our board. And it takes a lot of trust in yourself. Once it's down, it's down. Look at that. Nothing you can do, move on with your life. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Don't try to rip it off. It'll become way worse. Look, mine was off, I don't know, it'll be fine. So it's stuck to the board. Make sure you smooth it out just a little bit. Uh, it should be pretty good. And then we are going to be covering the edges. Look at that. I'm making sure to pinch the sides. Uh, that's important for later on, so just do it now. And once again, what I'm doing is I'm creating a lot of friction from the board and the paper, and it makes it smooth out onto it pretty evenly. Um, I remember a bookbinding teacher of mine did not like that I did that a lot, but you know what? Bless them. All right, so what we're doing now is we're cutting the edges off 
uh, the little corners from line to line. And that is going to prevent something called dog earring. Unless you have a dog, you really don't want dog earring. Make sure to hit your head on the camera as hard as you can and affect the, the shot as well. We're doing the same thing, just flipping it over and sticking the sticker side down. And uh, it's the easiest way I've ever had with covering up a book. Now, I will say these are laser jet printed, so they're not perfect. They're gonna wear a little bit on you, uh, but you can use matte fixative to spray it down and it will hold a little bit better, but still not be perfect. But these are very temporary books. You're gonna use it for this year and then you're gonna hopefully make another one. All right, so now we have an inside sticker. You can use a plain one. You can use one that you printed on as well. I recommend a plain one so that way you can write notes. You can write like your name, like property of Kevin or whatever your name is. All right, so sticking that sticker on, it is going to fit perfectly or it is not going to fit at all. Uh, this is another just big tr trust exercise in yourself. Once you have all those uh, smoothed out, go ahead and dab your holes because uh, your board already has holes in it. You're doing this so that way the drill bit honestly doesn't get gunked up. But also as a way to uh, make sure that it looks a little bit cleaner. Whenever we put a drill through the boards, it can fray quite a bit. But now it just looks fine. <laughs> now, uh, just go ahead and do all of that exact same thing on the other side. I'm not gonna talk as much detail about it. But what are we doing first? We are making sure that these orientate, orient, 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 orientation is the same way. Gosh, words, I can't even. Make sure the orientation is the same way and then you just repeat all the same processes, cutting. And look at that, one's not like perfect, doesn't matter. Stick sticker on it, boom. It is important you say boom whenever you are done. Like, like, I feel good about it. Like, boom. Like, you know, a little bit of, like, energy, zest popping you through the day. Give yourself a thumbs up and then feel bad about it. All right. So if you are working on a bigger book, one that's 9 by 12, it's the same deal, except for these are significantly easier because the sticker paper comes off in the middle. So you can line your board up pretty nicely without actually that much work. You can put it down on the non-sticky side, just like this, and then flop it down. It'll stick to the sticky side. I don't know how to tell you how stickers work. All right, but it sticks to the sticky side, non-sticky side will repel it, so that way we can actually just pull our board up just like that and peel that sticky off. I feel like that should have a peely sound and it doesn't, I apologize. All right, so I'm just taking it and I'm dragging my finger up the middle. This is making it so I get better contact and boom. See, doesn't it feel good? Like try it out, seriously. But it's all the same process except for it's actually a little bit easier just because of the divide in the middle. There's a picture of my cat. Her name is Holden Pawfield and I love her to death. All right, sewing. Now, what are you gonna do when you sew a book? And there's a lot involved. Um, it actually takes quite a bit. It's gonna take you a little bit to get really, really comfortable with it. So first things you need, you need your book, you got your boards, you got your paper. Grab a, a curved needle provided, a binder clip, maybe one or two, and uh, you need some uh, thread. Um, preferably linen thread, but we can really use whatever we want. So first thing that we wanna do is we wanna have our paper lined up with the holes matching just up from the holes. So that way we can see them and make it easier for sewing. When you're just getting started, you can always add on more strings. So just go ahead and cut off like 30 inches at a time in arm's length. And the wax linen thread's really nice because it can really get stabbed into an angle to make it fit through the curved needle. Uh, make sure you make constant facial expressions and in, in, in your in your your win over nature all right so we threaded our needle got the curved needle going curved needle goes through the hole and you are going to pull it through until there's about two or three inches left 
You can hold that down with your finger. You can stick it inside the binder clip, but you want those two or three inches because you're going to need to tie a knot after you do all this. So we're going down through the board hole. Pull it through. Get out of here. Then you are going to loop underneath. This acts as kind of a hook to hold it in place, like a knot, loose knot. You give it a little tug tug, feel good about your life. Make sure you're holding on a thread behind it though, or else that'll go flying. It's always kind of funny. And then we're gonna go back in the hole we started out, the one we came out of at the beginning. We need to go back in that hole. It can be kind of difficult. That's why I left this in. Um, I've bound hundreds of books at this time and I still have trouble with it. So don't be afraid if you're having some issues at the beginning because you might still have some issues at the end. All right, so we are, we pulled that through and now we can just tie a square knot or a double knot. I don't really trust people who do just single knots. You're gonna tie it off. Uh, the wax will actually hold it pretty nicely, uh, so you don't have to worry about it. And then do that on the rest of them. So I'm going down, wrapping around, and then I'm going back in the hole I come out of. So out the hole, down through the board. I added another binder clip because I was having some problems. Down through the board, wrap around, and then back into the hole. So a few things as you're working on it, you want it to stay pretty tight to there. We can actually shift this later, so don't worry about it if it's absolutely in the right place or anything. Um, but the tighter you are, the easier it'll be to shift it later. If it's loose, then the whole book's gonna be like a swinging door. All right, so now we're moving on. So the last hole, you need to go out and then you're going to add the next signature of paper on top of it. So go out, down, wrap around, do all the same things. But instead of going back in the hole, we are going to go into the hole of the next signature. And that's how we're able to kind of chain this up. You know, it goes upwards, it lifts up. Put your binder clips on, hold it in place. There we go. So I went in the hole that's above it. Like so. And then continue uh, the same process. So we're gonna go out and then we're gonna go down underneath the thread right there. So you see that? You can see I went underneath the thread. I didn't go back in the hole or anything. Went down underneath the thread. And don't worry, we'll see this plenty of times you can catch it. Then back in the hole. All right, so we go out, down through the thread, like underneath it, and then back in the hole we came out of. So this is a big part of Coptic binding. It's what creates the pattern uh, that we, people really like. I personally really like it too. Um, but you just go out the hole, down, loop the thread underneath it, and then go back into the hole. Now, it's important to go the same pattern every time, so if you're always going one direction or the other, just keep doing that. That'll make sense whenever you start doing it, you know? Like, I'm not gonna... It, it'll, it'll make sense when you're older. All right, so I needed to tie on new string, and to do that, I just tied off old string and then tied new string on it. Not really a big secret to it. All right, so I'm switching on to the next signature here. An important thing with Coptic binding too is we're always focused on going up the book. Like we're, we're always like going what's next, you know? So as you're going in, and then the same thing applies as you keep binding. 
All right, so to continue up the book, you come out the hole, you go down, the thread will go underneath the, the knot underneath it, directly underneath it, and then you go back into the hole. That's really the whole book. You're just gonna be doing that all the way up. And it's important, bind as comfortably as you need to. Uh, whenever I did this demo, it took me like an hour of filming just to get like two signatures in. And then I basically bound the rest of the book in like 10 minutes when I put it on my lap. So it's all about comfort to you. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Well, I guess there's a wrong way. There's definitely gonna be a wrong way. Anyway, so we're focusing on the uh, end of the book right now. So you need to take your signature and your board. You're actually gonna be binding those at the same time. A lot of people get really confused with this. And uh, that's a bummer. I, I mean, like this stuff happens. Uh, but you're basically binding the signature and the paper at the same time. It helps to have a lot of binder clips for that. But if you don't, you know, whatever, thumb clip, thumb clips isn't a thing. Paper clips, oh my gosh. All right, so I went out the signature, went into the hole, looped around, and then I'm going into the signature above it. So I'm not going back into the signature I came out of, I went into the signature above it. We'll see what it looks like here again in a second. So right into the signature above it. So remember how you transferred ones earlier? It's the same idea, except for now there's a big board that's super in the way. This is a, this is, yeah, this is awkward, right? You get better at it, or I guess you don't. Some people's books are terrible, but what are you gonna do? All right, so I went out the signature I'm in, so I'm on that one right before the board. And then I'm going underneath and looping that thread just like I was doing all the entire time. But instead of going back into the hole, my signature, I'm going through the hole at the top, the board, looping that one, and then going back into the signature I started out of. Hopefully that makes sense. That's why I provided a lot of videos so you could see it as clearly as possible. Although this is in standard definition, I apologize. I don't know, what is this, 2008? And then you go back into the signature. Let's see that a few more times so we have a good grasp on it, you know? So, going out the signature, going down, looping that thread, and then we're gonna go up through the hole of the board, then we're going to loop that down at the hole, and then right back into the signature you started in. Now you might be saying, hey, Kyle, which please don't call me Kyle. Hey, K-Dog, what, why are you making us do such a difficult book for the first time binding books? Well, I'll tell you. Cause I really like this book, man. It just works really well. It is the perfect sketchbook. Like you'll be mad at any of the other sketchbooks you've ever had with their like spiral bound digging into your wrist or when they're perfect bound hard covers and like you can never even tear your paper out and it's always like awkward and then always like bend and blah, blah, blah. Like this is a darn near perfect sketchbook. The only thing I think could make it a little bit better is if it had like perforated pages to make it easy to tear out. But you will fall in love with having a sketchbook like this. And I will go on to cover several other types of bookbinding methods in other videos. I do French link binding, I do secret Belgian binding, I do accordion binding, and they're all just different ways to approach a very similar thing. Now, of course, bind this like however you want. Bind it on your lap if you want. Tie an extra thread if you need to. There's nothing worse than running out of thread on the last one though. Oh, because it's so difficult. There's so many things going on. It's just awkward. All right, tie it off. Tie it off as many times as you can. Looks like I had a ton of issues tying this one off because why not? But it doesn't matter, book's done. Go ahead and uh, take your binder clips off and then like just revel in the glory that is you. Bask in its awesomeness, its glow, its effervescence. Give it a little wiggle. It's probably not going to close perfectly for a little bit, so just drop something heavy on it for a little bit. See you next time.